Well, let's get some more analysis on what we can expect, and particularly that meeting between the US and China on that sort of trade war. Uh, we can talk to Dr. Ramon Pesecha Pajo, who's uh, here. Good to see you. Uh, look, what is your analysis of what President Trump is doing in preparation for that meeting with Xi Jinping? Well, uh, he has had some conciliatory words. He has said uh, that China and the U.S. could reach an agreement, but he has also said that he's happy with the current deal, which is basically imposing tariffs on Chinese goods. Mm. We, we've seen him, him playing the, the hardball line um, before. Is that just part of his negotiating tactics, to, to set it up for further negotiations? I, I think it is. I mean, he has just uh, signed the agreement with uh, Mexico and Canada, so he's in a good position when it comes to, to, to trade uh, with these two partners. So I think he's trying to tell China, look, uh, I'm happy to sign an agreement with you, but I have agreements with other countries. The one with Mexico and Canada, one with South Korea recently, there are negotiations ongoing with the European Union. So his position is not as bad as it might have been a year ago. Yeah, I mean, with the, what about the other big international players here? Because there is some concern that if this war, trade war, should escalate, then, of course, it's going to start to have a global impact. So does that mean that, that some of the other uh, major players here are going to start applying pressure? Absolutely. For example, you saw a statement from the BRICS yesterday calling for uh, open trade. You see how the European Union and European countries on the sidelines, they want an agreement. Uh, they also think that China should change its behaviour, but they want an agreement between the US and China. And then you have countries in Asia, such as Japan and, and South Korea, that are being affected by the trade war between China and the US. So everyone is being affected by this. Mm. And in terms of the specific uh, trade war between China and uh, the US, what, what support is President Trump likely to, to garner at this summit? Well, it is interesting because the Europeans uh, have uh, rallied behind the US, for example, in the WTO, uh, Japan as well. But the interesting thing is that you look at countries such as uh, India, uh, Brazil, that could have sided with the US, uh, but they haven't actually have sided with China. So I think there are two blocks here, the developing country block, the developed country block, and they seem not to have a common position. So there's a clear split? I, I think it has become quite clear with the statement coming out yesterday from the BRICS countries. I mean, they clearly said this cannot go on, we have to stop the trade war. So it, it was a message uh, to the US and other developed countries. I mean, it's interesting as well, isn't it, in terms of criticism of China, you're clearly not going to see that from Russia and you're not going to see that from Saudi Arabia, who are the, the two other big players in this where we've got all our international focus at the moment. Absolutely, and not only this, but they are going to be discussing uh, oil today apparently during the meeting and obviously everybody wants uh, cheap oil prices. So you see that Russia and Saudi Arabia are not going to be criticised for their behaviour in many different cases, right? So uh, this is an interesting geopolitical game that you have the economic component, the political component and the different countries look don't look eye to eye on these matters. Okay, Ramon, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much Thank indeed. Thank you.